So I was born in, um, in Toronto in the, like, the West Indian community. My parents are from Trinidad. I ended up getting a bachelor's degree in physics and astronomy. Somehow I ended up in grad school in Chicago for, for physics. Um, and while there it was, you know, it was an amazing time for me personally, but I really got to explore, you know, who am I as a person, who, who I am as a person, and um, the things that motivate me and what it is that I really want to do with my life. I decided to like really take a chance on something that I really wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I applied to film school and, and they let me in. I think it's just about telling stories, you know, ultimately. And it's like, for me, it's like a matter of telling stories that I never saw. It's like you rarely see a movie that, you know, is, is about the people that I know or the people that I grew up with. Um, and so I always thought it would be, if I had the opportunity to do those things, I would, you know, try to portray a bit of myself or the, at least the world that I, as I see it. It's directing, I think. Um, it's working with actors and sort of having like this big, uh, a view or idea of what you think something's going to be like from, from when you're writing it on the paper and to actually try to make that happen. To me, that's been a really enjoyable, enjoyable aspect and artistically freeing. And it's an amazing experience to, you know, to have that feeling, to feel like, a, like an artist creating something in, in, in front of a camera. And to me, once again, it like, sort of always comes back to the story. Is there something... Um, that I find really appealing about the story. Is there something universal to it? That's that's really happy for me. That makes that's what drives me and that's what motivates me and wants me to tell stories. So even though like it may not be my story, I'm completely open to to working with other with other directors or other other writers or whatever the case is to, to tell interesting stories. I think it happened in probably in in Chicago. I'd say it was when I was living there, and I was doing photography. But when I look at my photographs from from back then, it really, to me at least, it really sort of showed how I saw the world or how I envisioned the world around me. Um, and to me, it was more. It was then that I was like, oh, I think there's some. I'm really enjoying this, and I sort of like this process or the ability to to show the world how I see the world. And um, it was then that I really became interested in becoming a storyteller and, and a filmmaker. But I think later I became more interested in, um, in the stories of these people, the stories of scientists, the stories of science as a whole. And then I became just primarily interested in the stories of people um, and trying to understand people around me and things like that. The work of Terrence Malick is, to me, like the what sort of really inspired me, for example, his film from the late 90s, uh, The Thin Red Line. He's got like a great respect for nature and all of his work, um, but there's also this intrinsic humanity in there as well that I think comes through. There's people like Spike Lee that fiercely independent and stick by their views. That's, that's inspiring me to me now as well. The film is, is loosely based, but not really based on the relationship that, um, that I had with my father. My father was diagnosed with, uh, with Alzheimer's disease. And, you know, when it really became towards the end of, you know, of his life, it was just a completely different person. It was, or as I say, he was like, it was like meeting um, someone for the first time. It was a completely different person. He wasn't like this man that, that raised me anymore. And it's like that, that feeling of what it's like to meet your father for the first time, you know, towards the end of their life. Uh, that sort of became the, the, the essence of the movie. Let's just say it was like above 10,000, but below, below 20,000. Uh, the main source was Kickstarter. Um, I raised $10,000 through kickstarter.com, which was, um, which was, it was amazing. It was actually an, an amazing experience to do that. I called in a lot of favors. And then also I got some funds from, uh, I got a grant from Spike, from Spike Lee, um, and some other smaller grants came through as well. And then I got some finishing post-production fun funding from Trinidad and Tobago. In terms of production, a lot of it was um, transportation. And then, you know, taking care of the crew, like 
food and stuff like that for that week or so that we were down there. And then in post-production, that was like a, an eye-opening experience as well because there was a lot of money that I wasn't expecting I had to go into post-production for. Um, for getting just like a good sound design, a good sound mix, things like that. Duplications for DVDs for festivals, not, a, not only submissions, but like physically getting a DVD to them. Shooting in Trinidad was, it was, it was difficult. It was difficult. There's very little support or infrastructure for filmmakers. Uh, the availability of crew, especially when you don't have a lot of money, is, um, is difficult. Um, so the inf like dealing with the infrastructure was difficult, even just getting equipment from one point to another point was became really difficult. Um, but that's when you bring down the proper people or the people that you trust that are able to deal with things like that and are flexible enough to, um, to deal with those things and still you know, have your back as a filmmaker is, um, is amazing. It's an amazing experience. It was an amazing experience to go down there and screen it for you know, for the Trinidadian audience. And so I know it meant a lot to them, to those people, but it meant a lot to me because the film had finally, um, you know, come home. It's like we screened it in the places where we shot. And it was, it was a humbling experience and definitely like, you know, one of the highlights of my life. Like it was just, it was an amazing experience. I think it depends on the audience, like which is which is great. If I screen for a like a West Indian audience, I think they're more aware of some of the critiques and a lot of the inside things that I have in the film um, that speak to you know the the Trinidadian experience or the Caribbean experience or things like that. But when when I screen it for like a much more um, I guess a wider audience or like um, a more North American audience or people that really aren't aware of. West Indian culture or Trinidadian culture. Um, people really just get the father-son story and people appreciate it on that level. So depending on if I'm screening it for, like I said, a West Indian audience, they'll get some more of the, they'll get more of the story, I guess. But there's something there that everyone can, uh, that everyone does, I guess, appreciate or can understand or, you know, can, um, can feel as well. I want to make the film have much more muted tones and much more muted uh, realistic feel, sort of this gritty New York feel, New York indie type film. And I think it takes that sort of aesthetic and feel of it, but we've transposed it to a different location. The colors, I really went for a more natural, natural, natural lit feel. I want it to look as if you were there, um, not like some tourist perspective of, you know, of the islands, but, you know, what what does it really look and look like in Trinidad? And so there's a lot of like a lot of neon lights because that's primarily the lighting source in Trinidad. I'm working on an adaptation of uh, of the short into a feature film. Um, so hopefully there'll be a feature of Doubles with Light Pepper coming soon. Um, also working on an adaptation of um, of a novel called Superyet. Uh, which is written by David Chariandi, who's a Canadian author. Um, and there's also the script that I co-wrote with Spike Lee called Time Traveler. In five years, hopefully, I'm still making movies. Hopefully, I'm making, um, hopefully, my second or third feature film by that time. Um, yeah, so hopefully, I'm still telling stories that, that mean something to me personally um, and somehow means something to other people as well. It's really an exciting time. I definitely feel a part of something. Like I definitely feel as if I'm, you know, with a whole bunch of other filmmakers that are trying to, um, you know, tell honest stories and but do it in interesting ways or show people something that they haven't seen before. Um, it's like a blessing and a curse as well. It's gotten really easy for people to to tell stories now, to tell, to make movies. People are interested, I think, in the in the region as a whole because it's a part of the world that they haven't seen yet on the big screen or have seldom seen. There's a lot of work coming out of Trinidad right now. Um, and I think that was, it's sort of been motivated by the government in Trinidad. And I think they're really trying to develop the country as being you know, one of the hubs of the region or the hub of um, both in terms of writing but also in terms of production like really trying to draw crews to trinidad to to shoot there they just started up a film school at, um, at the university of the west indies in trinidad and so they're really encouraging people to sort of learn the craft um, of filmmaking both technically and also 
the artistic side of it in terms of writing and in terms of directing as well. So I think Trinidad and Jamaica, of course, are the big sort of producers of, of content. Um, but, you know, there's, there's the smaller islands, you know, St. Lucia and places like that, um, Barbados, that are also really developing and putting out work. And what it comes down to is, you know, are filmmakers there, do they want to, are they able to, and do they want to tell their own stories? It might be easier to answer something that I can't, that I can't forgive. Uh, and that's definitely bad sound, is that's like what drives me nuts. I mean, I teach, I, I teach sound, but I think on a whole, like I can forgive something sort of out of focus, but if something's like staticky or it just sounds bad, like I, I lose interest immediately because to me that's just like, this is something really simple and it says a lot about about the filmmaker and their um, their ability to communicate their ideas and how skilled they are as a filmmaker. There's gonna be a lot of people that um, tell you no all the time, but it's like you have to, you have to be willing to do everything for your movie. You have to be, you have to be willing to produce, to write, um, and just do everything because no one cares about your movie more than you do. No one's going to work harder on your movie than you will. You can't be a jerk in this in this industry. I feel you have to be be able to work with people. It needs to look good and it needs to sound good, but you can't do that yourself. Like you depend on people. You need people to do that for you. Um, and so you have to create an environment where people can can give you their best work, whether it be actors or um, you know cinematographers, sound people. All these people want to make the best film for you and you have to give them the opportunity to do that because everyone's making a movie it's like you've got to be so much better than everybody else like something has to stick out the work has to be good to be able to get out there to be able to survive um, and demand an audience see it so it's just like a matter of really being artistically free and being able to do that with limited means and it's a matter of just getting good performances from good actors and hopefully that's enough to, to tell the story and to keep people interested.